Hi there, and welcome to 2LGTBQ for You. Today we have the top 10 LGTBQ movies to watch or rewatch on this long weekend. I'm not too sure about you, but I have some favorites that I hope make the list, and I'm always on the lookout for the next great recommendation. This list of films ranges from subtle and quiet to political and groundbreaking. What will our top three movies be? Let's get into it. At number 10, we have Kissing Jessica Stein. Now this movie is definitely an oldie, but a goodie. According to Rotten Tomatoes, Jessica is at the end of her emotional rope. She happens upon an intriguing personal ad whose only drawback is that it's in the women seeking women section. On a daring whim, she decides to answer it, and she meets funky downtown hipster Helen Cooper for drinks, and to her surprise, they click instantly. With conventional gender roles absent, the two women proceed to muddle through an earnest but hilarious courtship, making up the rules as they go. This 2001 rom-com portrays sexual exploration, self-acceptance, and coming out while remaining light and entertaining. It has withstood some criticism from the LGBTQ community for not dealing in depth with the difficulties of being openly gay, but overall it has become a go-to feel-good movie to enjoy repeatedly that provides representation of bisexual characters. In the book Sexual Fluidity, Understanding Women's Love and Desire, the film is cited as a notable example of female sexual fluidity in popular culture writing that it depicts a lesbian becoming involved with a man, contrary to the more widespread depictions of heterosexual women becoming involved in same-sex relationships. Coming in at number 9, we have Milk. This 2008 biodrama stars Sean Penn as Harvey Milk. In 1972, Milk and then-lover Scott Smith leave New York for San Francisco with Milk determined to accomplish something meaningful in his life. Settling in the Castro district, he opens a camera shop and helps transform the area into a mecca for gays and lesbians. In 1977, he becomes the nation's first openly gay man elected to a notable public office when he wins a seat on the Board of Supervisors. The following year, Dan White, Josh Brolin, kills Milk in cold blood. This movie leans a bit on the longer side at over two hours. However, if you're a fan of Sean Penn, biopics, historical LGTBQ battles, and victories, then this weekend could be the one to watch Milk. The 1996 mystery thriller Bound comes in at number eight on our list. Sparks fly when Violet sets eyes on Corky in an elevator. Violet is the girlfriend of a violent gangster, Caesar, while Corky is fresh out of prison and doing renovations on the apartment next door. As the two women launch into a passionate love affair, they assemble an intricate plan for Violet to escape from Caesar with $2 million of the mob's money. But the important part is to make it out alive. This movie has a bit of everything for everyone. Mob intrigue, action, lesbian lust, and mystery. According to Wikipedia, the sex scenes were choreographed by feminist writer and sex educator Susie Bright. Bright loved the script, particularly as it was about women unapologetically having and enjoying sex. Disappointed by the lack of description in the sex scenes, she offered to be a sex consultant for the film and they accepted. Let us know in the comments below what you think about Bound having a sex consultant on the set. Number seven brings our one and only musical on this list, 2001's Hedwig and the Angry Inch. According to movieweb.com, Hedwig and the Angry Inch tells the story of an internationally ignored rock singer, Hedwig, and her search for stardom and love. Born a boy named Hansel, whose life dream is to find his other half, Hedwig reluctantly submits to a sex change operation in order to marry an American GI and get over the Berlin Wall to freedom. The operation is botched, leaving her with the aforementioned angry inch. 
Finding herself high, dry, and divorced in a Kansas trailer park, she pushes on to form a rock band and encounters a lover or protege in young Tommy Gnosis, who eventually leaves her, steals her songs, and becomes a huge rock star. A bitter yet witty headwig with her band, The Angry Inch, shadows Tommy's stadium tour, performing in near-empty restaurants for bewildered diners and a few diehard fans. Through a collage of songs, flashbacks, and animation, Hedwig tells her life story while on a tour of chain strip mall seafood restaurants, trying to capitalize on her tabloid celebrity as the supposed ex-lover of famed rock star Tommy Gnosis. Somewhere between the crab cakes and the cramped motel rooms, between the anguish and the acid wash, she pursues her dreams and discovers the origin of love. This movie has won multiple awards and accolades, so if musicals are your thing, Hedwig and the Angry Inch might just be what you find yourself watching this long weekend. Dallas Buyers Club enters the list at number six. This 2013 film tells the story of Ron Woodruff, a cowboy diagnosed with AIDS in the mid-1980s, a time when both the etiology and the treatment of HIV AIDS are poorly understood, its sufferers subject to stigmatization. As part of an ongoing experimental AIDS treatment movement, Woodruff smuggles unapproved pharmaceutical drugs into Texas to treat his symptoms. Here, he distributes them to fellow people with AIDS by establishing the Dallas Buyers Club, all while facing opposition from the Food and Drug Administration. Two fictional supporting characters, Dr. Eve Sachs and Rayon, were composite roles created from interviews with transgender AIDS patients, activists, and doctors. Fans and non-fans of Jared Leto and Matthew McConaughey will be blown away by the performances of the two actors. The movie received critical acclaim and is a solid choice for movie night. Number five is a 2020 documentary drama, A Secret Love. Chris Bolin, the director of the film, took a trip to visit his two great aunts, Terry Donahue and Pat Henschel. They told Bolin about their life together, and after hearing it, Bolin decided to tell their story via a documentary film. A former All-American Girls Professional Baseball League player, Terry Donahue, and her partner, Pat Henschel, met in Canada in 1947. They later moved to Chicago and ran a successful interior decorating business until the late 1980s. They kept their lesbian relationship a secret from their families for almost seven decades. Now in 2024, some community members may not be aware of the extreme danger of coming out in the 1940s, 50s, 60s, and beyond. These women managed to have the best life possible while loving each other behind closed doors. This is a personal favorite of mine and I confess to watching it several times since its release. If A Secret Love makes your list this weekend, please tell me your review of the movie. Tell me what you think below in the comments. The 1999 biography drama Boys Don't Cry is number four on our list of movies to watch or re-watch this weekend. Young female to male transgender Brandon Tina, played by Hilary Swank, leaves his hometown under threat when his ex-girlfriend's brother discovers that he's biologically female. Resettling in the small town of Falls City, Nebraska, Brandon falls for Lena, an aspiring singer, and begins to plan for their future together. But when her ex-convict friends, John and Tom, learn Brandon's secret, things change very quickly. Now, much has been said about the casting of Hilary Swank, a cisgendered actress, in this biopic of Brandon Tina, a trans man murdered in Nebraska for being himself. But the film itself helped introduce ideas of queerness and female masculinity to mainstream audiences, offering a frank portrayal of trans identity unabashed in its honesty and sensuality. And for better or worse, Boys Don't Cry's effectiveness hinges on Swank's performance, one that is still considered among the best of all time. 
Pierce's film was one that opened minds and hearts to the concept of trans identity at the turn of the millennium, dramatizing Tina's identity crisis with unsentimental frankness and shivery sensuality. And while trans activists continue to decry the casting of a cis actor in the lead, Swank's bruised, many-layered performance remains outstanding. Now this is heavy weekend viewing and it comes with many trigger warnings for violence, sexual violence and other things. Despite this, if you are in the right frame of mind to view this movie, you will come away profoundly impacted by the story and the portrayal of Brandon Tina. Another movie on the list that I rewatch perhaps on a yearly basis. Let me know if you've seen it yet. Do you plan on rewatching it? Blue is the Warmest Color is a 2013 drama comedy that finds itself at number three on our list. A French teen forms a deep emotional and sexual connection with an older art student she met in a lesbian bar. Now this queer coming of age drama has come under fire many times for being a lesbian film directed by a straight man, for his reportedly abusive behavior as a director, for its inclusion of a largely gratuitous and extremely explicit lesbian sex scene between the two leads. Nevertheless, Blue is the Warmest Color, which follows its protagonist, Adele, over the course of her first serious relationship with a woman, remains a landmark depiction of sexuality and first love. This is a very long film at three hours. However, a leisurely long weekend in bed can easily accommodate this length, and according to many critics, it will be well worth it. Number two is a more recent movie, 2022's Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. This is a hilarious and big-hearted sci-fi adventure about an exhausted Chinese-American woman who can't seem to finish her taxes. A woman drowning under the stress of her family's failing laundromat, her ailing marriage to Waymond, and the elderly father who disapproves of her life choices. But it's the widening gulf between Evelyn and her daughter Joy that threatens to unravel the fabric of existence as she learns that she's just one in a vast universe of Evelyn's and the only one that can save it. This movie is visually stunning and full of small yet significant details. It's quite long, but tackling intergenerational trauma, family bonds, and baggage, along with multiverses, it really does need to be. I plan on watching this on Saturday night. I will add to the comments and let you all know what I think after I'm done. Have you seen it? What do you think? Maybe let me know your reviews down in the comments below. We're almost at our number one pick. Are there any guesses? Before we reveal number one, I'm wondering if you would be so kind as to hit that subscribe button, maybe give us a thumbs up, or if you really liked us, and I sure hope you do, maybe even hit the bell so you can be notified right away when we upload a new video. Now on to number one, Brokeback Mountain. This 2005 romance drama often finds itself in the top of LGBTQ lists, and for good reason. In 1963, rodeo cowboy Jack Twist and ranch hand Ennis Delmar are hired by rancher Joe Aguirre as sheep herders in Wyoming. One night on Brokeback Mountain, Jack makes a drunken pass at Ennis that is eventually reciprocated. Though Ennis marries his longtime sweetheart, Alma, and Jack marries a fellow rodeo rider, the two men keep up their tortured and sporadic love affair over the course of 20 years. This adaptation of a short story earned eight Oscar nominations in 2005, a full decade before same-sex marriage was legalized nationwide in the U.S. Sure. Brokeback Mountain can be something of a punchline in today's marginally more progressive film landscape. That I wish I knew how to quit you line is as meme worthy as it is iconic, but the misty eyed love story and delicate performances from Jake Gyllenhaal and the late Heath Ledger keep it near the top of so many all time lists. An LGBTQ roundup isn't complete without the iconic Brokeback Mountain. Well, we've come to the end of our list and that's all for today. 
I hope that we helped you to provide some entertainment options for the weekend, and we really look forward to seeing you all in the next video.